Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to the next episode on Vienna Advantages capabilities. And today I'm joined by Ashish, who is going to help us understand uh, the the capabilities around financial closing and consolidation within the Vienna Advantage system. So uh, welcome, Ashish. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Richard. Uh, good morning or good afternoon. OK, thanks, Ashish. Uh, today we're going to be going through a couple of things. Let me just walk you through what we're going to be talking about today. Um, I'm firstly, I'm going to start off by explaining what we're going to talk about, and then I'm going to pass over to Ashish, who's going to take us through a walkthrough of the capabilities within the Vienna Advantage platform. We're going to keep it fairly high level because I want to you to understand the, the benefits and the values that is brought to the table. Um, we're not necessarily going to go through the intricacies and the setting up, but I really want to kind of convey what the uh, platform is able to achieve. So we're going to start off talking about the enterprise structure. So for enterprise level companies, um, you may have group consolidation or group structures within the organization where you've got several legal entities, um, sometimes within the same geographic area, sometimes they're a split between different regions uh, and the complexities that come from around that having several charts of accounts, uh, several base currencies being used. And we're going to be talking about how Vienna Advantage consolidates all of that information in and allows you to be able to report on any number of given combinations of those legal entities and uh, and how we can build up reporting structures within the platform. Next, we're going to be talking about closing off financial periods and the flexibility that Vienna Advantage gives you as a chief financial officer to be able to control which periods are opened, which periods are closed temporarily, which ones are closed permanently once we get to the, the year end process and we have audited accounts that have signed off. Uh, and then we're going to we're going to you know, then talk about the financial reporting elements. Um, then we're going to go into a little bit more detail about how Vienna Advantage displays the reports and how it pulls all the information from various locations so that you can create your financial and management reports within the uh, within the application. So. Without me going on any longer, I want to pass over to Ashish. So uh, Ashish. Thank you very much for um, for taking the time to go through this with us today. Um, I'll stop my screen share now and invite you to share your screen and talk about what we have within the platform, please. Thanks, Richard. So, uh, so I'll guide you through the process of setting up uh, organization structure for a group of companies within the Vienna Advantage. So, so this process is crucial for ensuring our streamlined operations for effective management reporting or a clear reporting across multiple entities within the group. So Vienna Advantage is a powerful and flexible ERP application that supports multiple entity management and its comprehensive feature allow us to manage different companies, branches, departments under a single unified platform. So let's dive into these steps uh, that involved in setting up the organization. So if you see the screen, so here uh, on the left side of the screen, we have the organization structure, which could be our uh, default organization structure, or that could be defined according to the holding structures. Uh, let's say if some of the companies are subsidiary or subsidiary of subsidiaries, so those can be defined here. So this will be the default structure uh, where you can define again uh, certain uh, organization groups like you have, uh, let's say, stretch strategy companies. So you can define a group of strategy companies and under those strategic companies, you can actually define those legal entities. Similarly, if you have uh, divisional uh, reporting, you want to segregate or categorize your organizations based on the op divisions. So, so for example, you have a tech division, you have a property division, property development division. So you can actually group those organizations and uh, you can uh, define the link between between these organizations. Now, system allows you to define multiple reporting hierarchies in the system where you can have more than one reporting hierarchy with a different structure at all. 
So for example, you want to report for, for your management where you, wa you want to define uh, the reporting hierarchy based on the regional structure. For example, some of the companies in the northern region of the country, so you can define those uh, under a northern region. You, you, you may have another region for southern where you can just drag and drop and define these reporting hierarchies. So now based on these reporting hierarchies that we define here, so system will actually consolidate the books of accounts of those organizations. So for example, if I select the northern uh, the, the Northern Consolidated Organization. So system will actually consolidate the financial data of these two organizations and it will uh, it will give, a, give us the report for our income statements or financial balance sheet where we can actually see the consolidated data. So what we've got here is an example where um, an entity, a group entity has three companies within the group um, and so we've got all three entities within Vienna Advantage, but we can say that you know, if we wanted to report on them, grouping them, these two companies in the northern region and this other company in the southern region, that would allow us to create financial reports that group the first two in northern and the, uh, the, the, se the, the third company, we could report on that separately. Is, is that right? Am I, am I understanding that correctly? That's right, Richard. Fantastic. OK, brilliant. Yeah. And so um, you can essentially create any number of reporting hierarchies within the system. So you've got complete control as to how you want to report on each of those entities. That's absolutely right. Uh, so we may have multiple reporting hierarchies where we can define our reporting structures based on based on the requirement. For example, if there is a statutory requirement, uh, so you can define your reporting hierarchy according to the statutory requirement where you uh, you just want to report based on the holding structure of the companies. However, for management reporting, management wants to see uh, the consolidation based on the divisional comparison. So, so you can actually uh, have multiple reporting hierarchies and you can uh, you can consolidate the financial data Fantastic. of those entities. Excellent. Now, um, pause me if I'm jumping the gun on this question here, but um, when you've got companies that are in several regions, uh, company A might be uh, at their base currency, might be US dollars. Company B, their base currency might be in euros, for example. So when you are consolidating the the um, the financial transactions to be able to report with these entities you know, consolidated into into one profit and loss, one balance sheet, um, how does Vienna Advantage account for that? Yep, uh, certainly. So, uh, so to handle uh, those scenarios where we have. Uh, the organization under one group but have different reporting currencies. So VA allows to manage uh, multiple reporting accounting books. So where you can actually define uh, the currency of those uh, accounting books. For example, you have uh, uh, one accounting book in your uh, US dollar and another accounting book in Euro. So you can define multiple accounting books and simply link those organizations for which that accounting book is applicable. So in addition to that, so there will be a one uh, base reporting accounting book where all the transactions will be posted in Vienna Advantage. So irrespective of uh, the main reporting currency of that organization, system will post into the uh, base currency. For example, for the entire group, my base currency is US dollar. So, and some of the organization whose reporting currency is Euro as well. So. Whenever system posts any transaction, system will post in both accounting books for those organizations where you have to report for euro. So that means system will post in euro as well as in US dollar. And for those organizations where you have only US dollars, so system will only post into the US dollar books of accounts. So Excellent. at the end of uh, any financial period, so, so you need not to translate from one currency to another currency where you select different types of rates and you uh, post it into uh, different ledger accounts uh, for uh, translation loss or gain. So system will post on a daily basis or whenever the transaction happens, system post parallelly into the another accounting book and you can have consolidation of those uh, organizations even if they're 
uh, reporting currencies are different. OK, so um, just to kind of recap on that one, um, our our group level has a base currency and that base currency might be in US dollars where we've got entities that, that operate in a different base currency, euros, for example. Am I right in saying that each one of the journal entries in the uh, the euro entity will be posting the entries in euros, but each one of those journals has the respective US dollar equivalent associated with that journal as well that allows us to then report at a group structure. And if that's the case, we would have the ability to control the exchange rates um, at which we are kind of converting from the euros into US dollars um, for, for given periods. That's right. That's right, Richard. Uh, so we we define. Uh, I mean, we use the currency, different currency sources for getting those currency rates. Even uh, on a daily basis, system get automatically gets those exchange rates uh, from from different websites. So based on the configuration, uh, system will get those exchange rates, and based on those exchange rates, system will actually post those transactions into to different currencies. Brilliant. Brilliant. OK, so now we've had a look at the reporting hierarchy, how we are structuring our entities within the group. Should we kind of move on to how we control closing the periods, what a period closing looks like and and what uh, flexibility and control we have over that process? Yes, uh, certainly, uh, Richard. So VA allows you to control your financial period. Uh, where you have uh, the control of uh, the period closing at the document level. So when I say document level, that means uh, for each type of transaction, different transaction, you, you can actually control that period. For example, you have a separate control for AP invoice, separate control for AR invoices. You have a separate control for material related transaction. So you can actually control your period for each transaction. And also you can uh, control that period for the entire group as well as for each organization separately. For example, if you are working in a group of companies so for some of the uh, organizations, uh, you have uh, different period, uh, sorry, different financial period. So there will be a separate control for those organizations. And even if they are following the same financial period, but their uh, reportings are different. So some of the entities, they want to close their period. So some small entities, they want to close their period immediately after that month crosses. So they, they can actually do that. And uh, so it's very simple where you can just go to that respective period and you can click on process now and you select what type of action you want to perform, whether you want to close that period uh, permanently or temporary. So temporary closing of that period that allows you to again reopen that financial period and again you can do it for a particular organization or for a particular document or transaction type and for for the entire uh, system you can actually close that period fantastic so we come to um, the end of the year for example end of the financial year we can close off a period and i suppose to start off with, we'd want to make sure that maybe give it a couple of days to make sure that, you know, all of the uh, transactions have been posted to the platform. But then we can close down those periods temporarily. Uh, there would be a process by which we need to bring the auditors in and have the financial reports audited. Um, then perhaps there would be situations where we need to make some entries we might want to post to some of the general ledger codes or nominal ledger codes to make adjustments based on the recommendations from the auditors. And at that point, you could then close them off permanently. So the system is always going to reflect what has been published in the audited accounts. That's right, that's right. So, so as you clearly mentioned that uh, for audit adjustments, uh, you can keep all the documents uh, closed, but a GL journal where you can actually post your audit adjustments and once that's done, you can actually close your financial period. So when uh, once the all the audit adjustments are done and books are closed, you can actually close your uh, 
profit and loss accounts where your income summary ledger accounts will be posted. So all the revenue accounts which were credited at the time of transaction, so those will be debited and all the expenses which were debited, so those will be credited and the net amount, the net profit that we have before tax, so that will be calculated by the system automatically and it will post to the respective income summary accounts and then there is a, another process where if any income tax or corporate tax is applicable on the profit, so you can actually uh, configure that and the system will calculate the net profit, uh, net profit and the tax, uh, corporate tax, and it will post into the retained earning whatever the amount is left. Excellent. So the system's helping us um, going through a process of, of, I suppose, automating to an extent, um, closing off that period and moving the respective balances um, away from the profit and loss and to the relevant areas within the balance sheet. That's right, that's right, uh, Richard. Fantastic. OK, fantastic. So um, I suppose the next thing to talk about is what the, the financial reports look like and where we've started off the uh, the presentation, the webinar, where we are defining the group reporting hierarchies and structures. Can we have a look at what a PL or an income statement looks like um, within the platform? And whilst I ask that question, I, I've got another question on that. I'm, I'm talking about a profit and loss. I'm also talking about an income statement. Um, depending on you know, where you are in the world and how your company operates, some of the terminology changes. Do we have the ability to change Vienna Advantage to say that actually we're going to call this report an income statement or we're going to call this report a profit and loss? Yes, uh, certainly, Richard. Uh, so Vienna, had, Vienna, Vienna Advantage has a very powerful inbuilt reporting tool, so you can configure all your financial uh, reports like uh, your balance sheets or your income statements or uh, or you can say your profit and loss accounts and all those financial reports can be easily configured so there is no hard code or there is no coding knowledge is required to configure these reports so the user uh, with the access of configuration so they can actually configure those reports. So you can see this screen. So this is our inbuilt uh, financial reporting tool where the user can configure the report based on the risk requirement. And there are so many options that you have uh, to, to how to represent those financial reports uh, in, in the PDF format. You can also export it into the CSV. And uh, there are uh, so much flexibility to configure these reports where you can actually give whatever the name you want to that report, the description, and then you move to the line and there you define what lines you actually want to see. So now the beauty of this inbuilt uh, reporting tool is that you can actually link your ledger accounts directly to each reporting line, or you can link the ledger groups where you, you define certain ledger accounts, you create a group for those ledger accounts and you can actually link those groups to a particular line. So this entire report, uh, the user can configure according to the requirement and not only at the row level, but also at the column level where what actually the user wants to see at the column level, whether user wants to see the current year figures or previous year figures or previous two years, three years, four years. So what based on the requirement, user can actually the, configure these reports and certain define certain parameters like what, what are the different, what should be the different parameters of that report like calendar year, organization, the organization units, business partners. And once the report is configured, that means the user is ready. I mean, the report is ready to to represent the data and this report is not limited to that user. Other users using the same system can also see those reports, can also generate those reports if proper access is given to those users. Brilliant. So we've got 
you know, ultimate control as to what our reports look like. We can define that we want to run a profit and loss report for a given month, a given quarter, a given year. We've got we've got the ability to do kind of year on year or period on period comparisons, budget versus actual. Um, and again, all of that we can then say, I want to run this report on a given reporting structure that we've we've already defined. That's right. So that's right. So that's for example, this is a balance sheet where so I have in the parameter I can either I can fix the organization in the report itself or I can give the user an option to select the uh, the organization if uh, the user actually wants to see the consolidated reports. For example, these are the reporting hierarchies that we created on the other screen. So you can yeah. see here we have a northern region or southern region. So so we the so whatever the level that we select here, so for example, if I select the northern region, so all the organizations are linked to this northern region, so system will consolidate the balance sheet or profit and loss account for those uh, for those uh, organizations. So if okay. you select the all the organizations, you just select the reporting hierarchy and system will consolidate the data, financial data of all the organizations that cover under this region hierarchy. Excellent. OK, let's um, let's run the balance sheet or run p &L to see what this looks like. Yes, absolutely. Yep, so this is how the report uh, you can configure and it all the formatting that is again as I mentioned it's a configurable so you can uh, actually do the formatting at each row level as well as at the column level you can also apply conditional formatting just you are doing on a spreadsheet where you have uh, uh, or you want to highlight some of the uh, some of the lines where the value is less than zero or in negative so you can actually perform a conditional formatting uh, for those figures, so, so system will highlight those lines uh, for. And uh, again, there is an option where user can further drill down to those transactions. The moment user click on this I icon, system will jump or the system will show the details of this particular figure. And further, it allows you to go to that particular transaction and you can see from where that figures uh, has been accumulated in your balance sheet or in profit and loss account. Excellent. So, you, so we're having a look at the information at the, the highest level. Um, within here, you've got current assets, which we can then break down into its respective nominals or general ledger codes from within there. But we've also got the ability to have a look at the detail um, of, of how it's made up from each individual transaction as well. Sure. Excellent. OK, so we've gone through quite a lot um, on, on the call today. Are there any other things that we 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 were going to talk about that that we haven't spoken about? I think we've been pretty comprehensive in, in this, haven't we? Yes, uh, just about this uh, financial reporting tool, I just wanted to mention that uh, here user can actually prepare uh, the the profit and loss statements with the comparison of actual figures and budgets. So this is how flexible this uh, reporting tool is, where you can at the column level you can actually define that you actually want to see the actual posting type, or you want to create another line where you say your uh, current year budget. So system can uh, pull up the data for for that particular year for whatever was posted in the budget for that financial year. And uh, even and you can. I was going to say, importantly, from a CFO's perspective, you don't need to be a developer to be able to do these things. You've got the ability to make these changes to the reports within the system um, you know, as quickly as, as you can think of what it is you need from a reporting point of view. That's right. That's right. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, Ashish, thank you so much for taking us through that. Uh, let me just take control of the screen just for one more minute as we wrap up. 
OK, so just as a reminder the, uh, of, the, of the items that we've spoken about today, we've gone through some examples of where we have several entities within a group and how we've got the ultimate flexibility to be able to consolidate each one of those entities um, in predefined reporting structures, how each one of the entities can have a different base currency but we've still got the ability to consolidate all of those the reporting at a group level. Uh, we've gone through how we can close off the financial periods and the flexibility we have about and the control that we have around which of the um, documents um, you know, we're talking about general ledger codes, uh, accounts receivable, accounts payable, for example, where we can control whether each one of those entities are opened, closed temporarily or closed permanently, depending on what our requirements are at that stage. And then finally, we went through the financial reporting where we had a look at the, the balance sheet and the profit and loss, um, where we've got all of that information then consolidated after we've done all of the setup, consolidated and presented at the level that we're defining. So, Ashish, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate you taking the time to go through the system with us. Um, for everybody watching, if you want to know some more information, uh, if you'd like us to do a demonstration on the capabilities or perhaps even talk to you about the challenges that you're facing within your enterprise deployment, we'd love to have the conversation. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Ashish, and we'll speak to you all soon. Thank you.